One useful value used when designing subsurface drainage systems is a drainage coefficient. In this discussion, we will define the drainage coefficient and show how it is calculated. Let's review the purpose of subsurface drainage. Subsurface drains, uh, more commonly known as tile drains, or simply tile, are extensively utilized in Iowa. Subsurface drains are used for two main purposes. First is to remove excess water from the soil profile, and the second is to remove collected runoff underground to a suitable outlet. NRCS has two conservation practice standards that provide design criteria for subsurface drains. Conservation Practice Standard 606 defines subsurface drain as a conduit installed beneath the ground surface to collect and or convey excess water. Prior to the 1970s, sections of tile were the most common conduits used for subsurface drainage. Since then, corrugated plastic pipe, also referred to as tubing, has become the predominant material used. The standard lists two purposes for the subsurface drain. First is remove or distribute excessive soil water. Second purpose is to remove salts and other contaminants from the soil profile. This purpose mainly applies to irrigated areas. The second NRCS standard is Conservation Practice Standard 620 Underground Outlet, which defines the underground outlet as a conduit or system of conduits installed beneath the surface of the ground to convey surface water to a suitable outlet. The purpose of the underground outlet is to carry water to a suitable outlet from terraces, water and sediment control basins, diversions, waterways, surface drains, and other similar practices or flow concentrations without causing damage by erosion or flooding. How do we determine the drainage capacity needed for these purposes? To design either practice, we need to know how much water we're dealing with. In agricultural situations that NRCS typically deals with, the amount of water depends on an area or watershed. So it makes sense to th that we think of this volume like we do precipitation. So we're going to use inches of depth for the drainage coefficient, just like we talk about rainfall. The next question we need to answer is, how fast do we need to remove this depth of volume of water? Do we think in minutes, hours, days, or weeks? Since we're usually dealing with large areas in a cropland situation, minutes or hours probably don't make sense. So we're going to choose the day as our unit of time. Again, similar to how we think of precipitation. So we're going to choose the day as our unit of time and define the drainage coefficient in terms of inches per day. The drainage coefficient then is the rate at which water is removed from the site in a day, expressed as inches of depth. Where the purpose is to remove excess water from the soil profile, recommended drainage coefficients have been developed based on experience. These recommended drainage coefficients are published in our NRCS Engineering Field Handbook Chapter 14 in Table 14-5 and they're also found in the Iowa Drainage Guide Table 3.2. And these tables are, are the suggested drainage coefficients used to design subsurface drainage for cropland. You can see that as the crop becomes more valuable or less tolerant of excess moisture, the recommended drainage coefficient increases. Also, you can see for organic soils, which hold more excess water than can mineral soils, the recommended drainage coefficient is also larger. For those landscapes such as north central Iowa, where there are intakes included in the drainage system to remove surface water, we need to increase the drainage coefficient to account for this undetermined amount of surface water. Now please note that these values are not used when designing terraces or wash cobs or other situations where the required drainage rate is determined uh, during a design process. Our drainage system consists of tile or pipes. Uh, capacity of pipes is given in cubic feet per second rather than inches per day or inches per 24 hours. We'll need to convert the drainage coefficient into CFS. I'll illustrate how to make the unit conversion from inches per 24 hours to cubic feet per second. Okay, to make the conversion, let's start with one inch per 24 hours and use a factor to change inches to feet. Okay, the next step in the conversion is to use a factor to change hours to seconds. Multiplying that out, we get a very small number in feet to s per second, which is close to, but not really, the units that we're after. To get numerator into cubic feet from feet, we can use the factor feet squared per acre. Performing the multiplication, we get the answer in cubic feet per second per acre. So we end up with the one inch of drainage coefficient equals one inch per 24 hours, or 0 0.04201 cubic feet per second per acre. This is a useful number to remember for our future design work. So let's try an example. 
For this example, we want to install a subsurface drainage system on an 8-acre crop field. We want the system to be able to remove 3 8 inch of water per day. In other words, we're designing to a 3 8 inch drainage coefficient. Since we know that 1 inch drainage coefficient equals 0 0.04201 CFS per acre, it's a straightforward multiplication uh, to multiply 3 8 times 0 0.04201 times 8 acres to get 0.126 CFS as a required capacity of the outlet. We can perform the same calculation for a second site with 45 acres and see that the required capacity is 0 0.709 CFS. So let's look at some other examples. Let's look at a field about 640 feet by 725 feet which is to be drained for general crops. What is the design flow at the outlet for a 3 8 drainage coefficient? Please stop the video and, and do the calculation then restart the video to check your answer. Our first calculation we need to do is determine the area in acres. And that gives us 10.7 acres. Then we can repeat the calculation as we did before to obtain the answer as 0.168 cubic feet per second as the design flow rate. For our next exercise, we want to determine the minimum capacity needed for an underground outlet for a water and sediment control basin. Let's assume we have a drainage area of 15 acres in a field with a corn soybean rotation. The site is in Plymouth County in northwest Iowa. For this site, the runoff curve number is 75, and using the EFH2 software, we find that the Q10 rainfall is 4.3 inches, and the Q10 runoff is 1.89 inches. What is the minimum pipe capacity required for this water and sediment control basin? The criteria in the 620 standard requires that the stored water, the runoff, be removed within 48 hours. To convert this to a drainage coefficient, we divide the runoff by 2 to get 0.95 inches as the design drainage coefficient. Now we can calculate the minimum pipe capacity. You can pause the video to do the calculation if you wish. Using the same formula as before, we find that the minimum capacity is 0 0.0599 CFS. Let's do one more to show the difference in capacity at a different location. Here we have an underground outlet, uh, for, again for a water sediment control basin, this time in Keokuk County in southeast Iowa. This site will have different soils and rainfall. At this site, the runoff curve number is 80, the rainfall is 4.7 inches, and the runoff is 2.63 inches. We need to determine the minimum pipe capacity that's required. Again, we need to remove runoff in 48 hours, so we're going to divide the runoff by 2 to get the drainage coefficient. Again, you can pause the video to do the calculation if you wish. Here we find that the minimum capacity at this site is 0.832 CFS, which is much larger than the site in Plymouth County. And the difference there is basically the difference in rainfall and the difference in the soils. As you've seen, it's relatively straightforward to convert a drainage coefficient to units that make sense when considering pipe flow. We can use the same process to convert CFS to acre inches per day. So here we find that one CFS is very close to 24 acre inches per day, or two acre feet per day. This is another number that may be helpful when doing planning and design work. This brings us to the end of this presentation on the drainage coefficient. If you have questions, please visit with your engineering staff or me.